Venice to Stockholm. Our only pleasure, watching trains. Once upon a time, the Emperor and the Flying Dutchman used to stop here in Gulen. Now it's only the local from Kafkian and the 1240 from Kalberstadt. Look! The fact is, we're ruined. What with the waiting work shut down and the foundry finished, the Golden Eagle pencil factory all washed up. It's life on the door. Did you say life? We're rotting, starving, crumbling. The whole town. Once, we were a center of industry, a cradle of culture, the best town in the country, in the world. Here, Goethe slept. Brahms composed a quartet. Here, Berthold Schwartz invented gunpowder. Well, anyway, Madame Zakanazi will help us. <coughs> if she comes. If she comes. Last week, in France, she gave them a hospital. In Rome, she founded a free public nursery. In Lothenau, a bird sanctuary. You know, she gets all that money from an oil company and a shipping line, three banks, and five railways. And the biggest string of geisha houses in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, go on, get Oh, you go. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I, I must use the outhouse source. Any news, Colonel Master? Is she on her way? Yes, the telegraph has been confirmed. Our distinguished guest will be arriving on the 1240 from Congress. Everybody must be ready. The next choir is ready. And, and the uh, church bell, Pastor? The church bell will ring as soon as the new bell ropes are fitted. Matt is working on the bell. Oh, very well. Well, the uh, mixed choir will form up in the town square, along with the turn of the green. Uh, they will form a human pyramid, with the top man holding a golden wreath bearing her initials. Uh, after that, lunch to Golden Apostle. I shall say a few words. Of course. I have thought of illuminating the uh, town hall and the cathedral, but we simply can't afford the lamps. This is... Burgermaster, what do you think of this? Shill! 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 Yes, yes, right away, right away. Shill, this is more your line. What do you think? Oh, no, 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 no. That will never do, Burgermaster. Uh, it's much too intimate. It shouldn't read, Welcome, Clara. It should read, Welcome, Madame. Zakanasian. 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 But she's Clara to us. Clara Bosher. Born here. Her father was a carpenter. He built the outhouse. <laughs> All the same. Uh, no, he's right. You're, you're going to have to change. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave this and I'll put Welcome, Madame, Zakanasian on the other side. Then if things go well, we can always turn it around. Good, good idea. Uh, anyway, it's safer. Everything depends on the first impression. Gentlemen, you understand, of course, that the uh, millionaires is our only hope. Under God. Under God, naturally. Shil, we are depending entirely upon you. Yes, I know. You keep telling me. You're the only one who truly knew her. Yes, I knew her. You two were quite close back then? Yes, we were close. <laughs> There's no denying it. We were in love. Oh. I was young, good-looking, so they said. Ah, uh, Clara. <coughs> Still see her in the great barn coming towards me, like a light out of the darkness. Or in the Connons vile forest, she'd come running to meet me, barefooted, her red hair streaming behind her, like a witch. <laughs> yes, we were in love. But you know how it is when you're 20. What happened? Life well, came between us. That reminds me, Shiel, you need to give me some notes for my speech. Yes, I think I can help you there. Well, I've gone through the entire school records, and the young lady's marks were, I'm afraid to say, absolutely dreadful. Even in deportment, the only thing which she was remotely passable was natural history. Well, good in natural history, that's, that's fine. She was an outdoor girl. Good. Wild. Mm. Oh, I remember once. They arrested a tramp, and she threw stones at the policeman. She hated injustice passionately. Mm -hmm. oh, strong sense of justice. <laughs> oh, and generous. Generous? Yes. Generous to a fault. Really? Whatever little she had, she shared. So kind-hearted. Once, she stole a bag of potatoes to help a poor, starving widow. Generous. Generosity. And that, gentleman is something I must not fail to make a point of. Oh, and such a sense of humor. Really? I remember the oldest man in town broke his leg, and she said, Oh, dear, now they'll have to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's enough for me. The rest is up to you, my friend. Mm, yes, yes, I know. But it's not so easy. 
After all, to separate a woman like that from her millions. Exactly. Millions. We need to think in big terms here, gentlemen. If she's thinking of buying us off with a nursery school. Nursery school? Don't accept. Hold out. Uh, I'm not so sure that I can swing it. After all, she may have forgotten about me completely. No! She'll... She'll... Uh, for some time now, you have been our most popular citizen. Uh, best respected. Most loved. Thank you. But I feel, therefore, I should tell you that... Well, last week I sounded out the political opposition, and we voted. It's unanimous. In the spring, you see me as burglar. But, but my dear Burgermaster, it's I, true. I'm a witness. I was at the meeting. <laughs> but this is a completely unexpected honor. I, you deserve it. Burgermaster. Well, well. I, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Sir, now, the first chance I get, naturally, I will discuss our miserable position with Clara. Uh, but tactfully, tactfully, <laughs> what do you take me for? Uh, everything must be correct. Psychologically correct. Uh, for instance, here at the train station. The smallest blunder, the slightest misstep could prove disastrous. He's absolutely right. Uh, first impression <clears throat> colors all the rest. Oh, I can see it now. Claire Zagnassian steps off the train onto her home soil for the first time in years, decades. She sees our love. She sees our misery. She remembers her youth as a single tear flows down her cheek. Her childhood companions throng about her in celebration. I naturally won't present myself like this. I'll have on my dress jacket and the top hat, mm -hmm. uh, my wife by my side, and uh, my grandson in front of me in his Sunday best uh, with flowers. Uh, only it comes off as I see it. If only it comes off as I see it. We have it. Oh, God, the train! We need to get ready! Wait, wait! It's not her train. It's the Flying Dutchman. Oh, it's not two hours before she arrives. For God's sake, we don't lose our heads. We still have a full two hours. Oh, who's losing their heads? Uh, now, when she comes, you two, Kramsberg, Vogel, I want you to hold up the sign that says, Welcome, Madame Zach Nassin, and the rest of us will politely applaud. All right! All right. All right. No, no, stop, stop! Please. No wild applause and cheering like last year with the Government Aid Committee. It didn't make a bit of difference, and we still haven't received any money. No, gentlemen, what we need here is a feeling of genuine sincerity. Be sincere. That's the secret. Remember, we're not dealing with a child here. Be sincere and move, my friends. After that, the church bell will ring. Oh, <laughs> Mixed choir. We'll form a lane down here. Uh, we'll form two lines here. We'll proceed in the lane, the Madam, 
I have no such fund. Well, now you have. This woman is Madame Claire Sacknassian. Oh my God. Uh, but naturally, we're going to stop at once if we'd only known. Uh, 4,000 marks. I couldn't possibly. Oh my God. Uh, Eat it, Del Foss. Would you like the train to wait for you while you visit the town? The administration will be delighted. You may take the train away now. I don't need it anymore. All aboard! What could be press man? But they're still in the dining car. You know nothing of this. Oh, and let them stay there. I don't want the press and you to get the moment. Later they will come all by themselves. <laughs> now what are you waiting for? All aboard! I trust Madam will not speak of this to the administration. It was purely a misunderstanding. <laughs> Madam. Gracious lady, as burgomaster of the town of Dublin, allow me to welcome you.
they sang beautifully. <laughs> and that little brunette alto, no, the one with the boy, <gasps> yes, was most impressive. <laughs> And who are you? Please keep shorts at your service. Well, I have no need of you at the moment, but there may be work for you by and by. Tell me, do you know how to close an eye? How else could I get along in my profession? <laughs> well, you might practice closing both. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful what sense of humor. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, dear lady, my, may I introduce my grandson, Fritz? Uh, my wife's dog. Oh, thank you. Congratulations, Burgermaster. Extraordinary child. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. uh, Our town pastor. <clears throat> the pastor, ah, how do you do? Say, is it you who gives consolation to the dying? That is part of my ministry, yes. And to those who are condemned to death? Capital punishment has been abolished in this country, madam. Oh, I see. Well, it could be restored, I suppose. What <laughs> <laughs> an original sense of humor. Quite, quite, yes. Oh, well, I can't sit here all day. I'd really like to see the town. Please, permit me. <laughs> oh, thank you, but these legs are not what they were. This one was broken in five places. Oh, my kittens. When my airplane bumped into a mountain in Afghanistan. <laughs> While the others were killed, even the pilot. As you see, I survived. Oh, but I don't fly anymore. Of course not. <laughs> but you're as strong as ever now. Stronger. Uh, 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 we'll never fear, dear lady. Our town doctor has a car. Oh, I never ride in motors. You never <laughs> ride in motors? Oh, not since my Ferrari crashed in Hong Kong. Of course. Well, how do you travel then, little witch? On a broom. <laughs> Mike!
give it raw meat, and she gives us chicken and wine every day. <laughs> Rich people have very strange tastes. Strange tastes. Strange tastes. Come along, I'll take you to the lady. Oh, we know the way. We know the way. <laughs> Once that gets moving along, everything else should follow. I wonder what she needs a panther for. Who knows? It's all too much. The pastor had to go home and lie down. <coughs> you want to know the truth. She frightens me. She is a strange one. You understand, Virgo Master, that a man who for 22 years has been correct in the Latin compositions of the students of Gulen is not unaccustomed to surprises. Really? I've seen some things to make one's hair stand on end. <laughs> But when this woman suddenly appeared on that platform, a shudder tore through me. It was as though all at once, out of the clear sky, a fury descended upon us, beating its black wings. Now the place is lagging enough a bit. Schultz, come join us, please. Thank you. What's the word from the front? Well, I'm just back from Schiller's barn. My god, what a scene. She had us all tip-point around the straw, as if we were in church. And the way she carried on, no one dared speak above a whisper. I was so embarrassed, I let them go to the force alone. Does the uh, fiancé go with? Ah, with the sufficient rod and lending it, in full marching order. I wonder what she expects to find in the Conrosville forest. The same thing she expected to find in the old barn, I suppose. Which is? The, the ashes of her youthful love. Exactly. It's poetry. Poetry. Yes. Sheer poetry, and it makes one think of of Shakespeare, of Wagner, of Romeo and Juliet. Yes, absolutely, Professor. Uh, gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast to our great and good friend Anton Schiel, who is even right now working on our behavior. Yes, he's really working. To the most popular citizen of Yulin, my successor, Anton Schiel. Anton Schiel. Wow. Yes, yes, a, a, a farm. It's a season. Oh, everything. 
everything would be different, but it's just all as we left it. Well, Anton, there's a seat we sat on years ago. Oh. Oh. Under these branches, you kissed me. Over there, under the hawthorn, where the moss is soft and green, we used to lie in each other's arms. It's all as it used to be, only we have changed. Oh, not so much, little witch. You know, I remember the first night we spent together. You ran away, and I chased you till I was quite breathless. Yes. Then I got angry, and I started to go home, when suddenly I heard you call. And I looked up, and there you were, sitting in a tree, laughing down at me. No, it was in the great barn. I was in the hayloft. <laughs> were you? Yes. What else do you remember? I remember one morning, we went swimming down by the old waterfall. And afterwards, we were lying on a big rock in the sun when we heard footsteps. And we had just enough time to snatch up our clothes and hide behind some bushes when the pastor came by and scolded you for not being in school. No, it was the schoolmaster who found us. It was Sunday and I was supposed to be in church. Really? Yes. Huh. Tell me more. <laughs> I remember the time that your father beat you. You showed me the cuts on your back. I swore to God that I'd kill him. The next morning, I dropped a tile from a roof and split his head open. No, you missed him. No. Yes, you hit old Mr. Reiner. Did I? Yes. I was 17. You were not yet 20. You were so handsome. <coughs> you were the best looking boy in town. And you were the prettiest girl. We were made for each other. So we were. You married Matilde Bloomhart in her store. <coughs> and I married old Zachanazian in his oil wells. He found me in a whorehouse in Hamburg. It was my hair that entangled him, the old golden beetle. Oh, Clara. Bobby! A cigar! <laughs> my kitten smoke cigars? Oh, yes, I adore them. <laughs> I haven't had one. It's a taste I acquired from old Zakanazian, among other things. <coughs> he was a real connoisseur. We used to sit on this bench and smoke cigarettes, do you remember? Yes, I remember. Cigarettes I bought from Matilda. No, she gave them to you for nothing. Don't be angry with me for marrying Matilda. She had money. And what a lucky thing for you that I did. Oh? You were so young, so beautiful. You deserved better than to be stuck in this wretched town. Yes? Clara, if you had stayed here, your life would have been wasted with mine. Oh? For God's sake, Clara, look at me. A broken shopkeeper in a bankrupt town. But you have your family. My family. Never do they let me forget my poverty, my failure. Matilda has not made you happy. What does it matter? And the children. They are so completely materialistic. They have absolutely no interest whatsoever in higher things. Sorry for you. Clara, since you left, my life has passed by like a stupid dream. I've hardly ever been out of this town. Five days in a lake years ago. It rained the whole time. Trip to Berlin once. That's all. Well, the world is much the same everywhere. At least you've seen it. Yes, I've seen it. You've lived in it. I've lived in it. The world and I have been a very intimate. 
now that you're back, perhaps things will change. Well, naturally, I won't leave my native town in this condition. Well, it, it will take millions to put us on our feet again. I have millions. Three, one, two, three. Oh, why not? You mean you'll help us? Yes. Oh, oh, my little witch. I told them that they were that you were good. I told them that you were generous. Oh, little witch. Listen, a cuckoo. It's all just the way it was. When we were young and full of courage. Sun high above the pines. White clouds piling up on one another. The cuckoo in the distance. If only we could roll back time and be together always. Is that your wish? You left me, but you never left my heart. The same soft blue hand. No, not really. It was crushed to a pulp in the plane accident. <coughs> they mend it. They mend everything nowadays. Crushed? You never know it. Look, another farm. The old wood is alive with memories. <laughs> See, my love? See? Oh, four kilos ago. Uh, the fight, the fight, the run. <laughs> Failure? 
<laughs> what a golden <laughs> sense of humor. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, rib, you say? Oh, oh no, not good. at all, not at all, no. She, she's promised us a million. What? A million. Burger master? Yes, ma'am. I'm hungry. Oh, oh, well, let's start the meal. Uh, servers, please. It has been years, many years now, since you first left your hometown of Gulen, which was founded by the Crown <coughs> Prince, and nestles snugly between the forest of Conradsville and the valley of Pukenry. Much has happened in that time, much that is evil. That's true. The world is not as it once was. It has become harsh and bitter. We too have had our harshness and bitterness. But in all that time, dear lady, we have not forgotten our lovely Clara. We remember you. We remember your family, your mother, beautiful and robust, even in her old age. <coughs> uh, although, unfortunately, taken from us in the bloom of her youth by an infirmity of the lungs. Uh, your father, Siegfried Boscher, the builder, a monument to whose skill sits next to our rail station and is visited daily by many of our... S uh, that is to say, admired a tribute to local craftsmanship and design. And you, dear lady, who we remember as a, a lovely, golden-haired, little, red-headed sprite, <laughs> romping about our peaceful streets on, the, on your way to school, who among us does not treasure that memory? We remember your scholarly achievements. Yes. Good in natural history, a strong sense of justice, and above all, your wonderful generosity. Ah. <laughs> Forget how you once gave the whole of your little savings to buy a, a sack of potatoes for a poor, starving widow. Yes. Our little Claire left and came back as the world famous Claire Zachnassian, founder of hospitals, soup kitchens, yes. charitable institutions, art projects, libraries, nurseries, and schools. And now that she has once again returned to her hometown, sadly fallen as it is, well, I think I speak for everyone here when I say, Long live our Claire! Long live our Claire! of your welcome and the disinterested joy which you manifested upon the occasion of my visit to my native town. <clears throat> I was not quite the lovely child the Burgermaster described in his gracious address. Too modest, In Madam. school, I was beaten. What? Not by me. <laughs> the sack of potatoes which I presented to Widow Ball, I stole with the help of Anton Schill. <clears throat> Not so that I might save you a trail from starvation, but so that for once I might sleep in a real bed with Anton, instead of under the trees of the forest. <laughs> Nevertheless, I shall try to deserve your high opinion of me. And in memory of the 17 years that I spent among you, I am prepared to hand over to the town of Gulen as a gift the sum of one billion marks. 500 million to the town, and 500 million to be divided up per capita among the citizens. A billion marks? On one condition. <laughs> Recognize me. Hopper? 
It's Hopper! Not Chief Magistrate Hopper, who is on the governing board? <laughs> exactly. Chief Magistrate Hopper. Madame Zakanassian was a girl. I was the presiding judge at the criminal court here in Gulen. I served in that capacity until 25 years ago. Madame Zakanassian offered me the opportunity of entering her appointment as butler. I accepted the job. Now, some may think it's a strange appointment for a member of the magistracy, but the salary... Time to the point! Very well. You have heard Madame Zakanassian's offer. She will give you a billion marks when you have undone the injustice that she suffered at your hands here in Gulen as a girl. Injustice? At our hands? Impossible. Huh. Anton Schild. Yes? Please stand. Yes? In those days, a bastardy case was tried before me. Claire Zakanassian, then known as Claire of Osher, accused you, Anton Schild, of being the father of her illegitimate child. You denied the charge and produced two witnesses in your defense. That, that was a long time ago. We were children. An absurd business. Who remembers? Put out the blind man. <laughs> oh, here we are. <laughs> I have never seen them before in my life. What are they? They changed! They changed! What were your names in your former life? Uh, um, I was Jacob Hublein. Jacob Hublein. <laughs> I was Ludwig Spar. Ludwig Spar. Well, these names mean nothing to me. Jacob Hublein. Ludwig Spar. Do you recognize the defendant? Uh, we're blind! <laughs> By his voice! By uh, his voice. voice. His voice. At that trial, I was the judge. And you? We were witnesses. And what did you testify? <laughs> that we had slept with Clara Bosher, both of us, many times. <laughs> and was it true? <laughs> no. We swore falsely. And why did you swear falsely? Oh, because Anton Schill bribed us! <laughs> with, what? with what? A bottle of schnapps! <laughs> now, would you please tell everyone here, what happened to you? Mm. It's me! Uh, she tracked us down. She tracked us down. Madame Zakadassian tracked them down. Take a view blind. Visit Australia. Ludwig Spar in Canada. When she found you, what did she do? She turned us over to Mike and Max. And what did Mike and Max do? <laughs> they made us what you see. <laughs> and there you have it. We're all gathered as human once again. The plaintiff, the defendant, the two false witnesses the judge. Many years have passed. Does the plaintiff have anything more to add? There's nothing to add. And the defendant. Why are you doing this? That was a long time ago. It was all dead and buried. What happened to the child that was born? Lived a year. And what happened to you? I became a whore. Why? The judgment of the court left me with no alternative. No one would trust me, and no one would give me work. Now, what is the nature of the reparations that you demand? I want the life of Anton Schill. What? No, 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 she's joking, she's joking. That was a long time ago, it's all forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Neither the mornings in the forest, nor the nights in the great barn, nor the bedroom in the cottage, nor your treachery. At the end, you said this morning you wished the time might be rolled back. Very well, I've rolled it back. And now it is I who will buy justice. You bought it with a bottle of schnapps. I'm willing to pay one billion marks. Madam, this is not the jungle, this is Europe. 
We, we may be a poor society, we're not heathens. In the name of the town of Gulen, I decline your offer. And in the name of humanity, we shall never accept 